everyone in this session welcome to another session in go in this session we'll understand structs advanced concepts that is receiver functions in go we'll understand the receiver functions with return type in go and uh, the use of golang in an object oriented pattern that will that is we will access the public members of the object using the dot operator in go we'll understand if we can attach multiple functions to a struct and also we'll understand if we can attach multiple structs to a single function in go now let me first tell you about the syntax of the receiver function but before i jump over to syntax let me tell you what a receiver function is a receiver function is a type a special kind of a function in golang which can accept type not as a parameter but it will accept types and we when we can call the receiver function using a dot operator on that type now let me tell you the syntax to make you more understand on it so i have already copied over the syntax of a receiver function for you now you can see it start with func then there is a bracket now this if i will remove the func here so this will become an syntax of a simple function now if i will add it here now this has become a receiver function so this inside this bracket we will have struct object struct name or we can call that we can have we'll have a receiver here the name of the function parameters that we have to pass to the function any parameter return type parenthesis start parenthesis close so this is basically the syntax of an uh, receiver function now there is one more benefit of using this struct function that benefit is whenever we call this receiver function by using the dot operator on any of the custom type object that this function is receiving the value of that custom type object will automatically become available inside this receiver function even if will not pass the values as a parameter to this function now let me tell you programmatically of what i meant by that so now what i will do is first i will uh, define a struct with the name of s1 now it says name type string age type int okay i'm sorry it has to be on the next line now i'll say dob on it now if you need to understand the concept about the struct how to declare initialize and further concepts please refer to the another session in the same playlist where i have explained so about the structs in go so i have declared a struct here now the name of the struct is s1 now inside the main i will initialize the structs with some values so i'll say s1 and the struct is s1 now the name will be say mark and age is of type integer say 22 there has to be a comma here because i'm initializing the values now dob say 2010 i have initialized the structs with the values here now for this time, I will see fmt.println and I am just printing. So here, uh, what I have done is I have declared a global struct. Global means it is available to the whole class that is hello the whole hello.go. Now here I have initialized this struct and the value of struct is S1. Now here, what I will do is I will create a receiver function. Now what, as per the math, as per the syntax, I'll say func, then, s1 and the type of s1 is s1 now the name of the function is receiver function and it will accept none parameters it will return nothing and i will say fmc dot print ln and i will print s1 so this is my receiver function now if i want to call this receiver function what i will do is i will do s1 dot you see the receiver function has become a property of this struct. Now, these are these are the properties of the S1, right? Now, the property is age, date of birth, and name. Name, age, and date of birth. But apart from these properties, there is one more property. You see, so age date is of type int. Date of birth, it's of type string. Name is of type string. And receiver function is of type function. You see, so I have called this receiver function using this. Now there is one specific thing about it. I'm calling this receiver function on the S1 object that I have created for this specific object, and I am printing this S1. 
right? So this initialized S1 is automatically passed here and I will have all the values of this initialized S1 printed to on this receiver function. So I do not have to pass the uh, values related to this struct as an argument to this function if I'll use this function. Now let me show you here. You see, mark 22 and 2001, this is printed here. So this is about the receiver function. Now, where the second thing I use, I told you is we will try to use uh, the go in an object oriented pattern. So this is what I'm talking about. So we are calling the functions of an object by using a dot operator. So this is what I was referring to as object oriented. oriented pattern, right? That is calling object public <clears throat> members using dot operator. So this is what we are doing here. Now, uh, let me tell you, uh, receiver functions with a re return type. Now here, this receiver function is receiving an object S1, but it is not returning anything. Now, what if I want to return a string from this receiver function? And what I want to say is name in the struct object is, and I will say s1.name, and I will <laughs> receive it here and now I will print it here fmt dot print ln I will print name here now what this receiver function will do is it will receive an object I'm sorry it should not print it should return Since it is returning, so this value will be returned here and I'm printing that name. So this is a receiver function with a return value. Now let me run the program for you. It says name in the struct object is Mark. Now let me change the values to James. Now see what will happen is, if I run the program, it says name in the struct object is James. Now the next point is, can we attach multiple structs to a single function in Go? Let's check that. First, let me make this function in the same way of how it was previously, where I, with a no return type. Now, yes, now everything looks great to me. Now here I'm recreating one more struct. Now the name of the other struct is say S2. And uh, the values for S2 will be, uh, let's say it will be, it says job and it says salary, job is string and salary is say float. It says undeclared name, float compiler. Okay, so it should be float 64. Okay, find salary is okay, that's understood. We understand that. So now here, what we will do is, we will declare salary as well. Now the job is in IT and I will say salary is 10.50. Now in initializing S2, with this, now we have initialized S2 as well. Now, if I can accept S2 and S2, now let's see how this goes. Now see, we are getting an error. Method must have exactly one receiver. That means that 
if we are writing a receiver function, that simply means that it will have only one receiver. That means the receiver function can be attached to a single receiver or a single custom type. We cannot have it. Now let's understand the concept of can we attach multiple structs to a single function? Okay, so this is what we understand. Now let's understand can we attach multiple functions to a struct, to the same struct. Let's see. Let me remove this receiver function from here. And let me remove this struct as well from here. Now I have a receiver function here. That's already being called. Now, what I want to do is, I want to achieve one more receiver function that will be on the same object. It will have a return type of string. And what it will do is, it will return the name. Return, it will say name in the struct is, and it will say s one dot name. And in a similar fashion of how I have called this function, I will say name equal to this says receiver function one, and I will say fmt dot println and the name. Now see what I'm doing here is I have created a struct. I have initialized the struct. Now I am calling two different receiver functions of the same struct. In the first receiver function, I am printing the whole struct. In the second receiver function, I'm returning the name that is present in the struct. And finally, I am printing that struct. Now let's do it. You see, it has printed two output. First, the all values of the struct. And second, the name on the struct is Mark. Now let's change the name to say James. Let's run it again. It has printed the struct and it says the name in the struct is James. So this is all about the receiver function in Golang. There are more to come within more uh, sessions that I'll be making. Please do like, subscribe and comment if you like my videos. Thank you very much.